Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. This week I'm going to finish up with this short series of lessons on the topic of four finger picking and we'll be finally looking at adding that fourth finger in there, so uh, get ready for some speedy playing. As always, the lesson material for this video and all the other lessons can be found over at TalkingBass.net, just follow the link in the info below. A PDF of the sheet music and the tab for everything in this lesson can be downloaded and also viewed in your browser. And while you're there, be sure to check out all the other lessons on the lesson map. There are over a hundred other lessons covering all aspects of bass playing and you can also sign up to TalkingBass.net for free and gain access to a load of other practice resources in the members area. So, go check it out. Okay, in the last two lessons we looked at this kind of claw hammer free stroke technique that we can uh, use for incorporating all the fingers on this right hand. I worked through the history of the technique, the main pioneers of uh, applying it to the bass, how ramps can help with the technique and showed you several exercises for developing your speed and dexterity. Now in terms of the technique itself, the first lesson covered the basic thumb and index finger, then we added the middle finger and this time we'll be adding the ring finger into the mix. So if you haven't seen those two introductory lessons or if you have any problems with the exercises in this lesson, just work through those first two videos and you should be fine. So first of all, let's just get used to the action of adding that ring finger in there. So if we take a D here at the fifth fret of the A string, we're just going to play a steady pedal bass line on there that sounds like this. But we're going to go through each of the fingers using this technique in turn. So um, same, uh, same as before in the last two lessons, we want the arm coming in at this angle. So it's the same kind of uh, position that you'd use if you were playing with a plectrum or a pick. And um, so you want the arm sort of joining up here down in the heel of, of the uh, bass here. And also you want to be playing over, well preferably over a pickup or something solid like a, like a ramp. Okay, so I've got these two huge pickups here, so I'm going to be playing over those pickups. If you don't have anything like that, you can build a ramp, you can, you know, using a piece of wood or plastic or, you know, anything that you've got that you can fit under there. But don't worry if you don't have that because it is possible to do this without a ramp or playing over a pickup just like uh, somebody like Abraham Laboreal. He plays on a standard bass and he uses this technique a lot. So um, ramps and playing over the pickup just makes it a lot easier and you can generally build a little bit more speed with it. So, uh, so yeah, so you want to be over the pickup and just in this position. So let's try that pedal bass line. So we'll start with just thumb and first finger, okay? So that sounds like this. Okay, so thumb, first finger, thumb, first finger, or thumb, index finger, thumb, index finger. And uh, you can hear there that I'm accenting a little with the thumb. So I'm doing that on purpose so that you can kind of hear that in there. Uh, you can do that just to compensate for the fact that you don't have as much strength in that thumb and the fact that we're coming in, a different, uh, coming in at a different angle to what we are with the other fingers. So... Um, that just helps to compensate for that lack of strength in there. So, uh, you, I mean, you can play without uh, accenting it. You know, just trying to play, you know, straight bass line in there, but by accenting, we can really accent that downbeat. And that'll really come into, uh, um, into use a little bit later on when we start playing with four fingers. So, that's two fingers. So now let's move on to three fingers. So that would sound like this. Again, I'm accenting you know, on the first of each grouping of three. Okay, so that's what we covered in the last lesson. So that's three fingers. So now let's add this ring finger in there. And it's exactly the same principle. So we're going to be running through thumb, index, middle, ring finger. Okay, so we're moving in the opposite direction to you, what you would normally think of. So uh, if you're used to three finger picking like Billy Sheehan does, uh, you get that, oh, you know, uh, ring, ming, uh, ring middle index finger. You know, it's the opposite to that direction. So we're going thumb, index, middle, ring. And when I first saw how this was done on uh, using this four finger picking technique, I found it a little bit odd. Uh, I just thought that can't be right. You know, that's just gonna feel unnatural. But it's funny, it actually feels a lot more natural to move in that direction. If you were to actually try playing thumb, then, you know, um, ring, middle, index, 
it wouldn't, it does, it just doesn't feel as natural. I'm supposed to, I suppose there's some people out there that probably do find it um, quite natural feeling, but for me, it just feels a lot more natural to go thumb, one, two, three, okay? So, with four fingers. Okay, so that's the action. So, thumb, index, middle, ring, okay? And again, putting a little bit more of an accent on that thumb. And then you just gradually build up speed. You know, just build up speed like that. So, as I've said before, if this technique seems really weird and alien to you, then just be sure to check out the first two lessons in this series. There's a link in the info below, work through those and you should be fine. So you can see how we now have a really relaxed method for developing the kind of speed that you just wouldn't be able to achieve with two or even three fingers. The sound of this style of playing isn't perfect for everything and you might not want to use it 100% of the time, but it works fantastically well as an extra technique in the toolkit. So now let's just break down this technique, we'll start slow and then we'll just gradually build up speed, but I'll break it down as we go and just give you a few tips, you know, as we work through it. So, now I'm just going to try the exact same exercise, that pedal bass line on a D, 5th fret of the A string, but this time I'm going to try playing with a metronome. Now, the good thing about uh, trying this with a metronome is that you have a good, consistent reference point there, with the, you know, a very uh, strict metronomic feel, so that you can tell whether your time feel is okay with this. When you first start playing with these kind of techniques, you can feel like you're doing pretty well with it, you know, messing around with it, and then as soon as you start playing to something like a metronome, you realise that you weren't as solid with it as you first thought. So, um, so this is good for checking that. Now, don't worry about, you know, going straight in with the metronome. Um, one of the uh, problems some people have is that, you know, you'll be working on something and then, you know, you instantly try playing with the metronome and it's too much pressure at first. If you're still getting this under your fingers, you know, if you're struggling to, you know, be able to play with those four fingers, don't worry about it. Don't ne you don't necessarily have to play with the metronome. Just get it under your fingers to begin with. Once you feel a little bit more confident with it and you've got the action working, then you can try it with the metronome, okay? So, I'm gonna put the metronome click to 60 beats per minute to begin with, so it's very slow, but it's a nice, comfortable te uh, tempo for most people. So, here's the click, and so I'm just, uh, just gonna try that D there, 16th notes at that tempo. So we have, it'll be one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Okay, so again, you can hear how I'm uh, I'm playing with the um, with quite a bit of an accent on the thumb there, just so that I can really keep that consistent time feel as I'm working with it. You don't have to put that accent in there, but it can uh, often help when you first get started, just to compensate for the lack of strength in that thumb. Now let's try speeding it up a little. Let's try 80 beats per minute. So here's the click. Oh, one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. So you can try building up your speed gradually, 10 or 20 beats per minute at a time, but um, I'm just going to jump straight up to 120 beats per minute now, just so that we can see how that feels, okay? So, oh, one, two, three, four. Okay. Now let's try 140 beats per minute. A one, two, three, four. Okay, so you can hear there how we, we're uh, starting to get more of this rolling action in the hand. And this is a really good tempo for... Uh, for comparing the two techniques, you know, four finger picking and two finger picking, because you can feel there, if I put the click on again, that was fairly easy with the fingers, but with two fingers, 
It's not massively difficult, but you know, you really have to push a little bit more with the fingers there, you know, when you're using two. With four fingers, very, very easy, okay? It's also worth listening out for the difference in tone between these two techniques. Traditional two finger picking has a little bit more body to the sound, it's a little bit bassier, you've got more fundamental in there. Whereas with the four finger picking, especially when you're picking with the kind of, that kind of snap there, it's a little lighter because of the upward motion of the, uh, of the fingers and it's a little bit snappier. So, you know, as opposed to, so you can hear there a little bit more hollow sounding and some more snappy. You can uh, compensate for that by playing a little lighter and then just adjusting the volume of your amp. So if I was to play a lot lighter, I'm getting less of that snap on the thumb, but of course I would have to raise the volume to compensate for that, okay? So let's carry on with the exercise and uh, let's work up to 160 beats per minute. This is a lot quicker. Oh, one, two, three, four. Okay. Now let's try 180 beats per minute and see how that sounds. Oh, one, two, three, four. Okay. So far, I've only really mentioned the picking hand, but you also have to be careful to keep everything under control with the fretting hand. Now, in um, I have talked about this in the previous lessons, but I will go over it just uh, slightly as a reminder. When you play with the uh, standard kind of rest stroke, you know, two finger technique, uh, or, or even three finger technique, the thumb tends to mute the lower strings, so we don't get any of that residual noise. So with this kind of free stroke, um, floating hand kind of technique, you really need to do a lot more with the fretting hand. So even with something as simple as this single note there, that single D there, I'm actually holding this first finger across the strings there, uh, you know, so that I'm holding down onto the D and the G string, so don't really get any note, uh, noise coming out from there. And then I'm actually um, bringing the second and third fingers up and over so that they're resting lightly on the E string. So that then if the thumb accidentally makes contact with that E string or you know there's any kind of vibrations at all giving you that residual noise, that's all gonna be kept under control by these two fingers. So you can see there's all there's a lot, even, even though I'm not doing much with the hand, it is actually doing a lot because I'm, uh, I'm keeping everything under control there. And you have to bear that in mind whenever you're playing with this technique. And it's no different from whether you're playing with, you know, uh, plectrum, pick, or if you're slapping, it's the same kind of technique. We, uh, because we're using fingers for, uh, for plucking the strings, it's easy to think of it as being more like traditional two finger picking. When it's not, it's more like slapping. If you, if, you, if you think of this more like you would if you were slapping, then you'll probably have a much easier time with the fretting hand. So now let's have a look at a little riff that'll give you some practice in this technique and give you a bit of a better idea of how it might be applied in your own playing. So uh, the riff sounds like this. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, so this riff is pretty much in C minor and uh, we start on a C, third fret of the A string and the notes that we're going to be using just for this first part are C, G, B flat, C. Okay, so C, third fret of the A string, G, fifth fret of the D string, B flat, third fret of the G string, and then C, fifth fret of the G string. So, we work across there. So we have, uh, first of all, C, we have four notes on there using thumb, one, two, three. So just using the standard four finger technique. Okay. Then we have the G, played with the thumb. Then we play the B flat with the first finger. So first finger for picking hand. Then we play the C at the top there and we do four notes on that using thumb one, two, three. 
and then we just come back down B flat and G and that's with the first finger and then the thumb. Sorry, the thumb and then the first finger. <laughs> And it might seem a little bit odd coming back down after you've played the B flat with the thumb, coming back down to the G with the first finger, but you'll get used to it. You just it's just one of those things you've got to get used to. So And that's the whole riff, okay? So you just start slow. And then just gradually build up speed. So this is one of those riffs where this technique really excels because um, you know you can really build up some speed there and if you were to try playing that with two fingers it's a nightmare and even if you could get up uh, get it up to that speed you know which I, I can't do that but even if you did even if you could um, you would you know six minutes of that and you might have a problem you know so with this with this technique it's easy you know you can keep that going all night you know it's not a problem at all so this technique is great for this kind of riff so um now let's move on to the second part of the riff so uh we've got two little chord moves here we've got the e flat here at the sixth fret of the uh of the a string and we've got a very very similar pattern uh where we work across root fifth flat seven octave uh but we're going to just use a bit of a different finger picking pattern so the, first of all the notes so we've got e flat sixth fret of the a string then we move up to B flat, eighth fret of the D string. Then we move up to the D flat, which is at the sixth fret of the G string. And then we finally up to the octave, the E flat on to, uh, at the eighth fret of the uh, of the G string. So, um, so that's the next pattern. And again, we're just going to be using the first and fourth fingers of the fret in hand for everything. And then we uh, also have, before I move on to the picking pattern, we just move that whole pattern just up to an F. So we just move it up two frets. So the next pattern, we're going to have the F at the uh, eighth fret of the of the A string. And then we've got the C at the tenth fret of the D string. Then we've got the E flat up there at the uh, eighth fret of the G string. And then finally the F at the tenth fret of the G string. Okay? So... So that's the two patterns. So the picking pattern that we're going to use is we're going to have um, two notes on the lowest note. So let's go back to the E flat. We would have E flat there. Then we, on the fifth of the uh, of the chord, so on the B flat there, we're going to use another two notes, but we're going to play with the second finger, sorry, the uh, middle finger and the ring finger. So we've got thumb, index, then move on to the next note. So the B flat and middle index okay so we're splitting it up a little okay so it's the same action of thumb index middle ring it's just that we're playing two notes on different strings okay so once we've played that we just move up to the uh, flat seven and the octave there so d flat e flat and then we just move that entire pattern just up two frets so you want to practice just that pattern on its own and again that's one of those patterns that if you were to try it with two fingers um, it'd be a nightmare and like I say I couldn't get up to that speed and you might be able to get up to that speed but again it'll be the stamina side of things it's just a lot more fluid a lot more flowing um, less stressful in terms of the feel you might want that kind of stressful feel that real kind of agitated kind of fast kind of thing a uh, real aggressive thing in which case you may be better off using two fingers because then you know it's, it's really going to feel like it but for this kind of thing you know it's very very flowing that's where the four fingers comes in really useful so for the riff we've um we're going to play the first part of the riff uh, three times then we move up to the e flat 
and then the F. Okay, and then just gradually, slowly build up speed until you get up to up to uh, let's say this tempo. Okay. So that riff worked across the strings, but we were only using the four fingers on a single or two notes. If we're going to start running linear lines with both hands in synchronization, then we need to look at building muscle memory and coordination. And to do this, we can just try playing a simple chromatic scale. The chromatic scale is really good for getting to grips with this technique because it can easily be used, um, uh, well, easily played using four, uh, four notes per string. So it works out really good. So let's just have a look at a, a basic chromatic fingering that we can work through. So if we start on a C, We've got C, then we have D flat, D, E flat. So don't worry about the notes particularly, just think one, two, three, four with the fingers. Okay, so that's all we need to look at. So it's just, just lay the fingers down, one, two, three, four, okay? So eight, 10, 11, uh, sorry, eight, nine, 10, 11 in terms of the frets on the E string. Then we move up onto the next string and we drop down a fret, down to the seventh fret, and we just play the exact same pattern again. Okay, so just one, two, three, four with the fingers. So it's frets on the A string, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then we take the exact same pattern again and then we bring it down a fret on the D string. So this is the fret six, seven, eight, nine with the fingers one, two, three, four. So all together across the strings we have. Okay, so very, very simple. And this is why it works well with the, uh, with the um, four finger picking because we can just assign one finger to each one finger on this hand to one finger on this hand, okay? So uh, once you've worked up through that scale, then we can eventually hit the C at the octave there, fifth fret of the G string, okay? So, okay, so that's the simple basic chromatic scale fingering. So let's try playing that line using the four finger picking technique. So very slowly, eventually it's gonna sound like this. Okay, so you can see there I'm just working across. One, two, three, four. Okay, so it's a simple case of thumb, one, two, three, on this hand and one, two, three, four, and just putting them together. So it's a really, really simple line, but to begin with, it could seem a little bit daunting, especially when you're trying to build up speed. So one thing you can do with an, any, well, any exercise like this is to just take it down into fragments and practice those in isolation. So let's start by just taking the first five notes, okay? So we're gonna have C, D flat, D, E flat, and then the E natural there. So we've got, so we're just playing on the E string, the notes that we have there on the E string. So if that's frets eight, nine, 10, 11, and then we play the seventh fret on the A string. Okay, just try and get used to that move. So start out really, really slow. You know, if you have to go, you know, really slow, you know, just take it down to that and then just gradually, very slowly start to build up speed. until eventually you can build up quite a bit of speed. And the upside to building up speed gradually like that is that you'll always be, uh, you'll always have both hands coordinated, you know, because that's the problem. And you'll see this with a lot of uh, a lot of guitarists when they put loads of distortion on a guitar sometimes, because it kind of cover, uh, covers things up sometimes. It can, uh, it can, they can start to um, become sloppy when building up speed too quickly. So if you just tried going straight in at that fast tempo, you'd probably, you know, have sloppy technique. So you just gradually, gradually build it up.
Okay, and that's just that fragment in isolation. We can also practice that same kind of fragment on each string. So if we were to take the seventh fret there of the, uh, of the A string and start it there. Exactly the same thing. And then you can take it down to the sixth fret of the D string. Okay, so you're just practicing that exact same fragment but moving it onto the other strings in the chromatic scale. Now let's try playing the first two strings together, okay? And we'll finish on the D string, on the first note of the D string. So we uh, start at the eighth fret of the E string and we have eight, nine, 10, 11. Then we move on to the A string, seven, eight, nine, 10. And then we finish on fret six on the D string, okay? So. Okay, so you just gradually build up speed again, okay? And you can see how when you start building up speed like this, this, this technique, you know, you can, you can sound really fast really, really quickly. You know, it's a, it's a really good technique for building up that kind of, you know, shredder kind of technique. Now let's try the whole line across the neck. So, in terms of the frets, we have 8, 9, 10, 11 on the E string, 7, 8, 9, 10 on the A string, then uh, 6, 7, 8, 9 on the D string, and then finally finish at the C fifth fret of the G string. So, uh, that slowly will be. And one thing you can do as you work across here, and is um, quite important at the slower tempos, is uh, use the heel of this palm to mute the strings as you work across. So you can see there, I'm bringing the hand down to mute the lower strings as I work across, because otherwise you can start getting noise out of them. Um, so, um, let's just build up speed. Okay, so you've got a real, you know, whizzing kind of, <laughs> kind of line as you work up there. And, you know, this is just scratching the surface because this is just a very, very simple chromatic scale. There's nothing clever about this line, you know, you, you wouldn't be able to use it that much in, you know, in an improvisation, let's say. Uh, but it's just a means to an end. It's just a way of getting the fingers coordinated in both hands. Uh, and like I say, it's using these kind of four... Um, four note per string patterns, uh, which are really good for this, uh, for this technique. Once you've nailed that chromatic scale in ascent, we can try it in descent. And for this line, we're gonna try a slightly different fingering to the one that we've just used, just to keep it in that nice four, uh, four note per string pattern. So uh, we're gonna start at the C up here, uh, fifth fret of the G string. So this is where we ended uh, with the previous exercise. And then we're just gonna come down in four notes uh, per string, just as we came up. So we have. So that's the first part of the line. So we've got five, four, three, two on the G string. So in terms of the fret, so that's C, B, B flat, A. Then we move up a fret, up to the sixth fret on the D string, and then we do exactly the same thing. So that's the fret six, five, four, three, okay? So A flat, G, G flat, F. Then we move down onto the A string, and this is going to be the fret 7, 6, 5, 4, or notes E, E flat, D, D flat. And then we finally finish on the C, 8th fret of the E string. So, we're going to work down those. Okay, so that's the complete chromatic scale coming down from that C up there. So let's try practicing this scale using those little fragments in isolation like we did on the ascent. So first of all, let's try the G string do uh, dropping down to the D string. So we have uh, the frets five, four, three, two, and then six on the D string, okay? So that's the first line to try. Okay. 
And you'll probably find this a lot, lot tougher than in the ascent because we've got to get the fingers out of the way as we're coming down. And I find that it tends to sound a little bit more staccato because of it. Okay. So then we try the G string and the D string. So we're landing on the E there, seventh fret of the A string. Okay, and then we just add the uh, A string into there. So. Okay, and we eventually finish on the C, eighth fret of the E string. Okay, so as I said, that one's a lot, lot tougher. You've got to really get the fingers out of the way as you're coming down. So it's very, very easy to sound uh, quite sloppy as you're coming down, because as you heard, as I was coming down there, I was making a few mistakes as I was coming down. Okay, so that's the next line to practice. Now, it is possible to add those two lines to get, well, not those exact two lines, but um, play the chromatic scale ascending and then descending. Uh, but you have to do a little bit of position shifting to do that, just to, you know, to keep this kind of four, uh, four note per string kind of pattern. So I won't move on to that just yet, but uh, that is something worth looking at if you can get these off. But um, this is just a simple exercise. You know, it's nothing, you know, like I said, you can't really use this in improvisations or anything like that. It's just in order to get the hands working together and try and build up that coordination. So as I mentioned before, this is really just scratching the surface with this technique and it just gives you a little taste of what kind of things you can do. After practicing these lines, try applying four fingers to anything that you can think of. You don't want to be at the mercy of your technical limitations, so try to play things that don't seem to work as well with the style, just to push yourself. In turn, that should give you the freedom to be creative in whatever way you want without having to work within the confines of that kind of technique bubble. I'm pretty much a relative newcomer to this technique myself. I've only been using it for about three or four years, and uh, even though I've made a lot of headway, I still feel a little locked into certain patterns at the moment. But I know that with practice, I should become as comfortable with four as I am with two or three. So just take a look at people like Dominic Di Piazza, Matt Garrison, Hadrian Ferro, people like that, to see how far you can take it. And as I mentioned in the first video, check out the UK bass player Mike Flynn on his YouTube channel iJazzMonkey to see more lessons devoted to this style. I've seen him play up close and uh, personal, <laughs> and his mastery of this technique, it just blows me away. Okay, remember to like this video if it's helped and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also check out TalkingBass.net for hundreds more free lessons and subscribe to the site for free to gain access to all those extra bass goodies like the Scale Reference Guide, all the other eBooks, bunch of cool backing tracks, etc, etc, etc. Okay, I'll see you later.